there we go again. It's time for game number two, four C versus Osliki and Osliki from early game on till well, we can't even call it late game because it finished earlier, but yeah, later mid game they had the advantage and didn't lose anything on the way. All the team fights we only had like a couple, maybe three or four. Like they went their way and it was just a matter of time. Fourth seed then eventually decided after like a horrible fight in the mid and a loss tier two to GG out. It was kinda delayed GG, but it was one of those decisions that like rather GG a game than playing a demoralizing game on and then being down in your mood and performance in game number two. So they have a chance to come back here in game number two, make it a one one and in join Dota League it's all about points, it's not about actually winning the series as such. So a one one is just as important as winning or not losing. There is a huge difference between all those three. Either way I'm Haflamo coming with me is Mito and if you wonder why we are not casting on Hafla TV, it's because today there are so many games that I had to actually go to my private channel here. Usually this is not a casted channel, this is just me randomly streaming or doing sound tests whatsoever. So if you actually like what we do, then you can still of course follow on Facebook, Twitter and Twitch on one of the uh, channels like Hefla TV 1 or 2 if you're English, 3 and 4 if you're German. So yeah, that's all the explanation we need. So let's hop into the draft meter. Unless you still have your microphone muted. Or you ah, yeah, disconnect. I totally forgot about that. No, <laughs> it was the microphone. I'm sorry. And it puts a smile to my face, not only because I muted my own microphone, but also because 4FC, they respect ban the Mirana. The first ban that comes out, it's a Mirana. In Nyx Assassin, this is a little bit more unusual for me. Um, banning out this hero kind of says to me, it's like, hey, we want to pick up a hero like Wraith King, perhaps. I mean, you, you got to think about the heroes. That are really scared of Nyx. Pugna is another example. Pugna up against Nyx, you're just gonna have the most horrible time ever. Whenever you use the blast, he's gonna be ready with the spike carapace. And once Pugna, he has such a high intelligence growth. Ah, and indeed, it will be a Pugna pickup for 4 FC. And for Osleeky, once again, standard bands, getting rid of the Invoker Centaur. But it it does put I, I do have a question in mind is why would they want to ban the Centaur so frequently when Doxia, which has been like an early pick for them every single time, is one of the best counters to Centaur in the game. And if they can ever go aggressive and let a Doxia 1v1 the Centaur, that lane is considered like heavily in favor of Doxia. Yep. It's... I don't know, like, I mean, the, the Centaur ban is, is, in my opinion, just... It's always legit because I mean, yeah, you're right with the darks here versus center, etc. But I mean, that requires them to be in a direct fight, etc. To be to be countered, and the fact is, he's still a good offliner. He's getting like here and there maybe uh, some nice rotations, an early blink dagger, and then you always have this hoof stomp initiation plus, of course, the global uh, stampede being used to engage or disengage in fights. So. Like overall, this hero is just too strong that I think it's just worth it to always ban. But what I think is really interesting, the Pugna. I saw it yesterday played in game number five. Fold. If there's some Germans around here, then you might have seen. Uh, I've casted it on Half TV Four. Um, Mouse versus Fnatic, and there we also saw Era playing a uh, carry Pugna. And God, I love it. Like if you have just a tiny bit of a pushing strategy, it doesn't require much. They had actually Enigma and the uh, Furion. That was enough minions whatsoever, and then Puck now Nether Blast all the time in, and on the other side there was even a Puck. So the, the Puck against Nether Ward, he was pretty much blowing himself up with like three, four spells in a row. I love this hero, and I think he's underplayed. And this time I get to see him finally. Four FC is deciding it. And before I say anything else, we have the second ban rotation already. We have to hurry up a bit. Uh, Batrider Rave King is coming out, which is absolutely understandable. I mean, uh, the Batrider in the meta, as such, the Rave King is always a scary hero. I love him to see. I love to see him actually in support or carry role. It doesn't really matter for me because he's powerful on both. And on the other side, we have pushing potential is getting instantly banned out by Osliki. They suspect anything in that direction already like the ex uh, exorcism by the death prophet would of course be horrible and the mass serpent ward so i think also the fifth bond is going to be something in that direction maybe even nature's prophet if it doesn't get picked up now here yeah um right now with the three picks from osliki you know they're ready for high ground defense you have sanking as well as docks here um, however though, Sanking is going to have a very hard time getting the epicenter combo off because you're, you're always going to have 
the netherworld whenever 4FC decides to push. And just going up the high ground against the Doxia, that's always going to be difficult. And 4FC right now, their lineup to me, once again, feels a little bit out of place. It feels like these three heroes, I just don't quite see the synergy. Um, apart from Trian Protector being able to keep the Pugna and Silence it alive for a much, much longer time. But it, it's just not very good lockdowns. Whereas Osleeky, it looks like they can gank with ease. Sanking plus Doxia. You surge a sang Sanking. You iron shell the sang Sanking. Well, I'm having problems saying Sanking. Sanking? And it seems sanking? to be fine. It's, yeah, it seems to be fine once again. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> one of those years that are easily to pronounce Sanking. Sanking. I know. There's something wrong with my tongue right now. Yeah. Trust me, this is this is happening to me like in best of fives or after they were already been cast in, then in the best of five, the best of five with just small breaks in between, then I don't know, at game four or five then it's like blah 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 and that's that's all you pretty much say sometimes, especially if you do play to play cast in and in German being uh, naturally it's just a bit faster than the play to play, so <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. But back to the draft, we see a puck. So the puck is already coming out. You've been already talking about the synergy between Daxia, Slark, and Sanking. I actually love it as well because you have the Sanking Burrow Strike. You already talked about it. Maybe with the Iron Shell Plus uh, transitioning into the Sandstorm. That's a lot of damage over time for the stunned up target. Plus Slark has a nice setup to get a pounce in. Now with the puck we talk about something similar. We have the Dream Coil holding people in place where there is a nice opportunity to get, of course, Iron Shell uh, damage in as well as sandstorm damage in as well as Slark finding easy targets to get the pounds on so absolutely like it but there's actually like a pretty much a bus kill hero on the other side is silencer which is pretty much the anti-fun against every magic hero and there's a lot of magic waiting on Osleki's draft this silencer Trobo silence will hurt them a lot and not only that, looking at Silencer and thinking about counters to Slark, Bloodseeker just kind of pops in my head. I know it's very unlikely with their lineup. They do seem like they want to be able to push, team fight, and push, and that's their goal. But Bloodseeker Silencer, dual, dual laning, that's something that I've always been looking forward towards. Uh, Bloodseeker has received a lot of buffs and is one of the best counters to Slark, because whenever Slark is below half HP, he no longer gets a regen as long as Bloodseeker is on the map. Um, yep. But what do you think would potentially fit for 4FC right now? What would complete that lineup? I think I'm actually looking for something with proper right click, something that is also... The problem is, like, I, I saw Dream Protector and Pagna as the first two picks and I was like, ah, yeah, old school, this is going to be a pushing setup, like, early game, mid game, it has to be done, or this game is over now. Okay, with the Silencer, it's more or less like a counter pick against the Osleki draft. With the Jakira now, I don't really understand where the Jakira is coming from, except for Liquid Fire, which is additional damage on towers, but where is the core? I want a core, because, like, 4FC, let's just assume their early game goes very well, even the mid game they transition very well, maybe they even get like five towers or something, they have a gold advantage, maybe experience advantage, but then we see Osliki gaming uh, turtling, and in the end we reach what, the 40, 45, 50 minute mark, and then suddenly they have a core, and 4FC doesn't, and this is the danger in this draft in my opinion, so 4FC, I want to see something decent, even, I don't know, okay, it can't be Rave King, to be honest, the Rave King would have fit in their draft. <laughs> they 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 ban it out themselves, but <laughs> this would have fit. Additional stun, some right click, etc. A hero that comes back against the magical burst, for example. But I don't know what what else could they go for, like a Luna, life stealer. I don't know a Naga for super late game and the setup and snare into Pogno plus Shakira, etc. I don't know. I'm I felt like actually. <laughs> I feel like for FC they're lacking in so many ways. They don't really have a frontliner like an initiator right yeah. in the front and they don't have enough lockdowns look at the mobility from Osleki right now you have to dox here he can easily surge away unless he gets caught by some odd mistake Slug, he's he's not gonna have any problems running around Sanking, he's got Burl Strike as well as Sandstorm Puck, another very elusive hero and, you, and then you look at 4FC apart from the global silence how are you gonna be able to stop these heroes from just freely roaming around kiting you until like they decide to tear you into pieces so for FC right now I feel like
they need something big. They need something. Oh, and this is just gonna be all out pushing, I suppose. Yeah, it is. It is just just push the hell away. And this game, I mean, okay, with Lycan, of course, you have some potential. Then later with the BKB, he's shooting through those targets. But of course, I mean, against Lycan, you can't use slows. You have to use stuns or any ensnare. And the problem is they have it. They have it. Look at it. I mean, bear strike. You have the pounds. You have the dream coil. The dark seer. Maybe even using the vacuum back just to buy time till his uh, shapeshift runs out. <sighs> There's two scenarios happening here in this game. Either they do a successful pushing strategy, gain a proper gold advantage with it, or they are falling apart. Latest at the 30-minute mark plus. On Osliki, well, they have to get it through till that mark. Wow, yeah, this is completely a do or die from 4FC. Um, how are they going to lane this, though? Who is going to be the off laner? So we, we got to look at the players, I suppose, and it might reveal a little bit more. So who was the off lane player from the previous game? Do you remember? It was Eris Loco, and he has yeah. yet to pick a hero, so we're stuck in mystery. Yeah, we, we can use the time, though, to make a fast introduction here for the... Uh, for the Radiant team before we go into the laning of Daya because that's really the interesting part. Obi-Wan Banan, I love it and I say it again. I love this name. Obi-Wan Banan, it, it's it's like, I don't know, it's wine on your tongue. It's just <laughs> going. But anyway, Komi here on the puck. Big Num is on the Sand King. Judo playing the Darks here, which we saw on Eris Loco last game, and Inquisitor on his Slark. And to be honest, I have a bad, bad memory about Inquisitor and his Slark. Because he's known as the I don't hit a single pound slark. Like, I've been casting with Coucher and other casters of Hafla TV a lot of Osliki gaming even before they changed their sponsor and everything. And Inquisitor is famous for not hitting any pounds but still winning the game for some reason. So, I wonder how this works out. Let's let's look at the dire side. Yep, on the dire side, we're going to have Boomski playing as a support trian. And this is going to be round two for me to pronounce those hard names. We're going to have Strang B playing as a mid solo or even carry puck. He did start out with a ring of protection, so there has to be an aggressive trial lane. And we're going to have Eris Loco. Yes, I nailed it. Uh, playing as a support jack hero. At top, we're going to have Krilly playing as the carry lycanthrope. And Juicy going to be playing as a support silencer. Yep. And I think I got everyone correctly this time. So yep, proud of myself. Absolutely. And this time we have Boomski in a kind of weird position because he's going to find the Sand King here. But unfortunately, behind the Sand King, there's not much coming. So, yep. But the Sand King, I actually like his pickup there. Look, Boots of Speed directly at the start. So he really wants to go aggressive. Maybe some harass damage. And this is what you need because, oh my god, Big Num. Big Num just had oh. like a little glimpse here, but he had to go around the corner pretty much. But now. <laughs> okay, Str uh, Strang B is just going back. So in the end, we're gonna have here dual lane setup for four FC. But uh, to be honest, I don't think this is gonna stay like this. Are they really gonna lane that Shakira mid? Uh, this is not gonna happen. I mean, that er I don't. Know, I was about to say Era because the last book I casted was Era from Fnatic like yesterday. But uh, Strang B, I think he has to go in the mid sooner or later. Well, I have a feeling this is definitely going to be an offlane Pugna. Because usually when you see a Pugna mid, he's not going to start out with the Ring of Protection. It'll most likely be a Bottle Rush. And then you look at Eris Loco's items, and indeed he only has two branches. Buys up one south just in case and gets pulled two tangos. Yeah, this is wow, mid this is... <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I actually can't believe it. Let's see how this works out. Of course, I mean, the good thing is with, uh, with the dual lane here, uh, for Strangby, they might be able to grab more lane control, more XP and CS so that the Pugna is getting fast level because I mean what does 4FC want? They want a Lycan going fast in XP, they want a Pugna going fast in XP and the Jakiro. Jakiro is gonna aim for a lot of liquid fire damage to buildings, we're gonna see the Netherblast for building, we're gonna see Lycan split push and of course Wolves, Necro etc etc uh, on the buildings. This is exactly what they need but yeah, they require a lot of XP for that and let's see how this works out because in the end they run against the tri lane here and this tri lane is very dangerous. We have a slow, we have a stun and we have an ensnare by uh, if, the ta if the pounce actually hits and this is, I don't know, I mean we have a Pugna, 500 HP pool, this is not much. Well I guess they can abuse the hell a little bit more, I mean Pugna does have very nice attack range and 
whenever the lycanthrope uses the howl, it's gonna help him a little bit more. But if you look at top, it seems like Krilly's not having a too much of an easy time up against those iron shells. Yeah. And right now, it's only the single iron shells. Imagine what happens when, 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 when Darkseid gets double iron shell. Yeah, that's the, always the biggest problem, like the start against, oh, do we see already a go here on Boomski? No, there's just some right clicks coming out. Inquisitor actually tried to circle around a pounce. Nah, he's he's not too far away. This is just level 1 pounce. Boomski, well, he was like thinking about maybe I give him a hit with my crazy amount of base damage that's coming along with a Dream Protector. Like, with two Iron Pratchets, it's actually 87 base damage, so it's always worth to get a hit in there. But, I don't know, this, this lane, this is a big question mark for me, because... They need this partner online, uh, to be honest, more than the Chakiro. But you, you, you talked about the Iron Shells, and yes, the Iron Shells early in-game, it, it's just pain. That's why I also like that he goes for the Howl, he spams it pretty much on cooldown, which helps you in last setting, so you can go in and out, avoid the damage. And of course, the Silencer uh, can help you here as well, like just getting that creep low with the Iron Shell on top of it, and then, yeah. Aeros Loco now, <laughs> finding here a double damage rune. And this is the first time I cast a goddamn Chakira in mid. I really wonder how this is gonna... I was trying to justify the offlane partner, and after like several considerations, I think I understand why. If you look at the Sand King, he's been trying to stack the jungle hand. By the way, he, he tried to stack the camp by directly pulling downwards. And that's actually the hardest way to stack the camp. The best one is to pull towards the left side. So if you pull downwards or pull upwards to the left side, it would have yeah. been much easier. And the great thing about offlane Pugna is, as soon as you see that Sand King's gone, he's level 3, you know he's going to be stacking up and taking those stacks. And Strangby being a Pugna with at least level 2 Nether Blast can easily walk over and contest. And I suppose that's maybe that's something that they had in mind. And yeah. that's the reason why they have the offlane Pugna. Yeah, and Aeros Loco here, usually the offlane player for 4 of C, as far as I know, he's actually going for the 2 points in Liquid Fire. Now the question is, does he get that Liquid Fire, for example, on Komi? At the moment, he's trying to bait out that phase shift, because the problem is you can actually disengage that Liquid Fire impact on you with the easy phase shift. Level 1 phase shift, of course, is up on the puck, so Aeros Loco at the moment. I mean, I guess you can bait it out with a level 1 uh, dual breath, and then afterwards go for a Liquid Fire, but so far there's no harass damage coming out with the liquid fire but look there we see it the first liquid fire is actually reaching the tower and that's what i've been talking about look at the tower he lost just 300 hp but here big num finding boomski there's the level one nature's guys and there we go he's just gone but he finds the stacks in the jungle that means they know what's going on here they know big num wants to farm them sooner or later now big num actually getting that yep that illusion rune as well well, so not only, I mean, this liquid fire is just such a great spell up against Taras. Not only does it deal like damage over time to Taras, oh, but it also they, slows. They want to go on strange by. There's a liquid armor on him. The, the pounds easy setup, of course, after the burrow strike, and that is our first blood. I mean, Jesse was rotating in, but they even get the bonus gold from the Nether Ward on top of it. But Boomski coming in, is there? No, there's no leech seed. That's really too bad. So in the end, they can't do anything against it that's what i've been talking about a 500 hp poor pagna he's gonna die so easily with just two heroes i didn't even need the third one that was just enough burst strike pounds and that is pretty much an easy kill yeah and well the slug the the not only he landed the pounds i mean you're saying he doesn't <laughs> land but i saw that one land but the dog pact we, we forgot to mention just how good dog pact is at removing things like refraction or like living armor because yep. it deals, it deals. The damage goes over in like. Oh, they want to go again, but this time the pounds doesn't hit. There's a liquid, uh, liquid armor. Oh, oh my god! I was just about to say something about mid with liquid <laughs> fire, but living armor came actually up on strange by, and suddenly my brain made liquid armor out of it. So this armor is not too liquid. It's actually living armor by the dream protector, and there they already, like stop pretty much but now Bignum is going aggressive here on Boomski there's the nature's guys but oh my god strange B the pounds this time actually hit the dark pact you already mentioned it is coming a lot of damage and even though he's putting his ward up this is just not enough and now we actually have a kill here wow on the dark sea at the same time Jesse is getting the one that was with last word I guess Krilly did some damage there as well and then the finish off by the silencer so they get at least on the board yeah, I just want to quickly f polish up what I was trying to say before, and I think I've got it. Alright, so the slug, whenever you use Dog Pact, 
it deals damage in an interval of like 0.1 seconds over one second, which means it deals a total of 10 stacks of damage. Which yeah. means when you use living armor, it just instantly disappears. But look up at the by the way. Look at Liquid Fire. I mean, he's about to die pretty much. There's the Dream Coil up. The Burst Strike is gonna follow, but oh, he's buying at least some time with the Ice Path. But yeah, in the end, he's gonna go down. Just he rotated actually in doing some damage on Big Gnome, but it's not gonna be enough. And with this overextending, he might actually be in danger. There is another orb coming out. The orb damage is actually gonna miss. But now he's still trying to get the right clicks in and there is vision by the creeps in the mid. So Komi is getting another kill. So two down for four seats. 4-1 on the board. But what I wanted to point out is look at the damage in the mid on the tier 1 tower. Every time that Shakira reached the tier 1 tower, he, he pretty much put his liquid fire there. And yeah, it's quite significant that damage. Yeah, I mean once these tier 1s go down, it's much easier for 4 to just go in and try to make a go for the Roche. I wonder when or who is making the medallion for them though. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I mean, pushing wise, of course, this this really looks good. I, I love the the idea of, of 4FC going for this pushing strategy, but so far it just doesn't work out. And I was talking about this or them actually having an uh, advantage when it comes to tower pushing, when it comes to gold, because they get early towers whatsoever. But at the moment, look at Krilly. I mean, he has like, what, a seven minutes flood. He's still getting quite some harass damage against Judo. I think they have to group up pretty soon. They have to claim Roshan pretty soon. Otherwise, this game is just plummeting into Nirvana, like in both XP and gold. And now, actually, we see something in the mid. They group up exactly what I said. And there's the Nether Plus, the Nether Ward as well is coming out. Liquid Fire on top of it, and that is... No, it's still not the tower down. There's actually the Cliff coming out. Komi is in position to deny it. Now, the question is, do they get it? No, Chikiro is the lucky one. But at the same time, we see also Big Num, what you talked about already. He's gonna get level 6 with this probably or m maybe it's close to level 6 but the fact is he got 1500 gold and this is not much missing towards the dagger then yeah it is my personal belief that when you're gonna run a pushing lineup it's always so crucial to have some form of good initiation like clockwork like magnetar batrider oh, otherwise it's so do we see a go yet? There is actually a go on Boomski, but now he's actually fading away. There is something cast on Obi-Wan Banan, and with the Ice Path there, that's enough. Now, Inquisitor, he has the Shadow Dance, and there, he might actually get a kill and then just disappear, but at the moment, it doesn't work out. But Big Gnome is actually coming in, and this is really unfortunate for him. He, I mean, he secures the kill on the Train Protector, but he pretty much dies right after losing exactly the gold he had already for the Blink Dagger. He was not fast in reaction, he had actually 2200 gold, now he was plummeting down to 1900 something. So if he would have been faster in the reaction, he could have killed the Train Protector by the Blink Dagger and then, yeah, die, <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, not fast reaction enough there. Oh, but wow. look, look at this top, Lycan actually shapeshift used just to escape. He did some damage on the tower, and by the way, did you also see the Jakiro? Like, he was just putting up that liquid fire on, on the tower. So this is 3 tier 1 down so far. It's looking good for 4FC when it comes to their pushing strategy, but now they, they just have to continue. They have to get more. They have to get Roshan and the next towers pretty soon. One of the dangers of running an OM push lineup is generally your heroes are going to be on the level, but so far it feels like they're doing just fine. Um, yeah, things are not looking bad at all for them. Yep, and here in the mid, okay, Oris Loco went a bit aggressive, but the orb was already cast away. And now here, Boomski is healing up those towers. This is exactly what I was hoping for. And, oh, Darkseid actually managed that deny here on the top tower. That's, of course, a downside. I mean, if you have a pushing lineup and then towers are getting denied, that's really bad. But the fact is, now finally all tier 1 towers are down. And let's see. Uh, so far, they can hold their towers. And the question is, when does Osliki say, like, hey, guys farming and just waiting till they slowly bring our towers down is not enough we have to go get the initiative yeah um don't forget though for us they do have a hidden carry um not the pugna can be a, a pretty darn good late game carry as well if if not for bkb just having that agonim scepter upgrade is pretty good but silencer he has amazing agility gain in the current patch not only that he's already had six stolen intelligence so as long as he's in taking part in every single fight and gains those additional agility, towards the end, it could, could mount up to a su substantial amount. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now we see the first Nacro soon coming out on the Lycan. We also have other item progressions actually. Big Gnome now finally managed his Plink Dagger. I already mentioned it that he could have been faster with clicking it. Like, it pretty much cost him two minutes on the Plink Dagger uh, because he died when he had the gold. But it doesn't, doesn't really matter at the moment. Fact is, they go for it. And the second Plink Dagger on the puck would be, I guess, the next step. But looking at his gold, it's not looking too shiny actually 1200 gold so he pretty much needs uh, 1000 gold more so they have the two blink digger initiations they are supposed to go for also by the way inquisitor it would not be the first time that he plays also a uh, blink dagger oh but we have a go here on boomski and there's the blink dagger first time used pretty much by boomski but oh my god he i don't know what he tried to do there but he should have gone instantly in the nature skies but what did he cast oh actually he cast at nature skies but the fading time was too long unfortunately oh, and we have yeah, another he go here trying by inquisitor is actually getting in but he's actually trying to do something but the shadow dance etc is coming up now some jukes around the trees there's living armor actually and now jussie is the one who's paying for it but inquisitor is gonna get some damage but he's getting out as well this is the power of shadow dance in the meantime aris loco had like a little fight with Komi here in the end of course the overtime damage does hurt the puck quite a lot but he's getting healed up by the dazzle either way so Osliki securing another kill and they might actually want to go for more there is the epicenter channel and the blink in as well as the burst strike everything hits now the vacuum he's using his shapeshift krilly but just not fast enough that's the problem just imagine by the way this is the perfect thing 6.81 just imagine now the shapeshift giving him actually bonus HP exactly what they nerfed I think he might have survived there but without this yeah. 100, is he actually, yeah, this would have been 100 HP, or 150 on level 1 in 6.8, but now 6.81, mm -hmm. you don't get it, and therefore he died. That's the, the perfect scenario. Yeah, definitely. That little bit amount of additional HP in certain scenarios just means a world of difference. And it looks like for FC, they're very happy with just the Treant heal, because when you have, well, okay, it's a level 1 lead seed, but essentially that could have e easily been... An a, a free mech for the entire team if you have more levels in the lead seat. Yeah. And Strang B, he's going to go straight into a Necro Book as well. So we're going to see the mass push around, I would say, the 20 minute mark. I guess it has to be. And now we have another go here by Inquisitor. And he doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He goes up against two because he knows whenever it getting, it's getting too hot, he can just go Shadow Dance and off he goes. That's That's pretty much it. And now we also see the first two wolves reach pretty much the rosh pit checking out if there's something else but the fact is there's still a radiance observer ward this one has to die before uh, he goes into roshan or of course he invests into a smoke but then again might also not be uh, say too wise because you spend a hundred gold on osliki they will definitely scout this rosh pit because sooner or later krilly has to go in there yeah if he ever wants to go in he needs to smoke inside but it's always going to be um, a pressing concern for on Aeris Loco. But, oh, this going to end up in being... Wow, Komi is actually getting stunned in the ice path. But Inquisitor, okay. This time he's actually using the Shadow Dance, but he has to back off because there is the AoE damage, which goes through his ultimate. And now there's someone from the back coming. Actually, Jussie is getting a cast here on Komi, but the orb is coming away, so he's going to end up there. No, actually, he does not. So Jussie is getting the kill on the puck. What was that? What was that? Oh, Puck got silenced up. He couldn't orb. <laughs> oh, it was before he got the cast before. I thought he got it after the orb, so... So I actually thought he's just getting it. But the fact is, at the same time, we have Judo here pushing uh, top, but the wolves are already arriving, as well as Krilly, so they're gonna stop him, and in the end, Living Armor is gonna take care of that, as well as uh, in the mid tower. So at the moment, 4FC, well, they get another kill, which is good on Komi, because Komi... Well, his blink dagger was already up, so he didn't lose it just like Big Num did before. But the fact is, all their towers are still there, and they already got three tier 1 towers. I really hope... I mean, <laughs> we talked about it in the draft, and I think we are looking really at a 15 to 20 minutes time window. They have to get more towers, they have to k secure Roshan. Like, with this Lycan, or with this setup, the Roshan at 16 minutes, or 17 minutes, maybe even 18, is already late in my understanding, actually.
And now actually yeah. Boomski here overgrowth directly after the surge and this might be actually deadly for Judo. It's still enough but now there should be enough damage to get him down. Yes, he doesn't get that TP out. At the same time Osaki they're saying hello to the tower in the mid. I mean there is a living armor ticking up on him. They're gonna race through it but yeah they have to defend for FC. They must not give Osaki any tower goal and get those single pickoffs because at the moment it looks good. it's looking good. We have to look in the net worth. There we have Krilly. And Slark pretty much sharing plays 1 and 2. And then after that, well, uh, there's a mix of heroes pretty close to each other. But Big Gnome opening here on the Pagna in the mid. Pagna is getting his Necro units actually used, but that's pretty much it. They're going to attack now Komi, but I think this is the first tower we're going to see falling for 4FC. For At the same time, Krilly tried to split push a bit, but he's also getting driven out by Big Gnome instantly TPing back. So... This is kind of unfortunate, and uh, nobody is rotating in, and Slark, oh my god, is also getting another kill on uh, on the Silent or Jesse here, who tried to defend the tower. Boomski is coming in, but he needed that overgrowth to interrupt the TP, so really, really unfortunate. Now, Krilly in the mid, going aggressive, Weave is coming out, but I don't know, Krilly, at the moment, is just not having an impact on the game, to be honest. Not a single one, yeah. not nothing. <laughs> It's very hard for him to have an impact, because Osleeky, the heroes are just so good at running away, and there's no no good good lockdowns from his teammates. The problem with 4FC right now is every time they want to kill someone, they need to expend say three to four heroes to kill one. Whereas oh. Osleeky, any two can combo and pick out someone. Yep, and now Inquisitor actually, did you see that top? You went absolutely greedy yeah, in just to kill that nether ward. But now all Puck opening with a double waning rift, but it's not enough. There is the global silence coming out, and this is actually what I've been talking about now. They might actually get a turn around. There is an ice path, but not hitting anything. Oh my god, and a four man wall. Inquisitor coming in as well as the dream coil. The first one is that, the second one is going down. Shakiro, they only pay with the darks here for it. Three down for two at the moment, but Quilly is also gonna follow up. So everybody, but Boomski is pretty much dying, but Boomski, he already has been stunned. He's using Nature's Guys, but he's getting so much damage from the Epicenter and the Sandstorm following up. He's also been directly under a Sentry Ward, which is, no, wait, this is actually a Sentry Ward for the Dire side, but even without the vision on him, they just got him. So we look at a complete team wipe and just paying two hero deaths for it, Osliki, there. Well, this is just a little bit painful to look at. Um, all the gold advantage that 4FC gone in that tiny, tiny time through Taras, it's all coming back. Yeah, Osleaky, I'm showing the graphs at the moment. Let's talk about the graphs. Ah, yeah. It feels like if you look at the dip and then how it bounces back, it feels like Osleaky, they're doing the smart thing. Whenever 4FC is grooved up somewhere, trying to make a push going, then Osleaky is pressuring another tower and forcing 4FC to come back and defend. And every time they split up, then Osleaky just goes for the kill. And at this point, any two hero from Osleaky can easily net a kill. Mm. Whereas 4FC, they can only play the group 5-man Dota. They have no other choice. It's just the way the draft came down to. But you saw what happened if they group up. There was a wall on 4, there was a dream coil on 3, and this was even without the pounds hitting etc etc and now we see Krilly actually trying to go for Roshan but Boomski is gonna get yeah he was found by Inquisitor and now the entire fight is breaking out now we see Krilly actually falling here Obi-Wan Banan and oh he's just melting Judo actually makes it out with the search but in the meantime Darkseer got a kill on the Pagna and now I think this is just like a little standoff it's going forefront back the problem is Krilly shapeshift is gonna run soon out now Komi is gonna get found but oh my god a nice stun and blink out by Big Nom. so they pretty much reset that fight in the end the question is now can they go for more can they go back to Roshan and use that time at the moment it doesn't look like it because shapeshift another 40 seconds cooldown and Osaki would be ready to fight again there's actually the orb scouting out and Boomski is getting found the pounce is hitting and if not by the damage of Inquisitor yeah then the iron shell will just kill him and Jesse as well in danger big Nom, I don't know didn't he didn't he see him I don't know why there was actually no pounce what's uh, no Burrow Strike whatsoever, but Inquisitor is already taking care of it. Easy kill on him, and there, he saved the Burrow Strike just for... Oh my god. Oh, I don't, don't want to even comment this. He died, and Krilly is coming in as well. Now the Epicenter is getting channeled, and this is so much damage in the Dream Coil. Poor, poor Krilly is so dead. And another two-man Burrow Strike following up. That means Strange by actually 
might get a kill here. No, it's not enough on Inquisitor. And they also just managed to blink out. Dazzle is there to the rescue. Now they're just getting circled. Maybe Boomski here with the overgrowth and overgrowth under the tower. Yes, that's all good. They all lack mana. That's the problem. But Inquisitor, he healed back up. That's the strength of the Slark. And he's just getting an easy kill. He also has the pound still ready. Just waiting for that TP. The TV actually getting interrupted. Boomski was ready there. This is miscommunication at its best, I have to say. And yeah, Boomski here is the first one to call. This, to be honest, I think this really pissed him off. He wanted to protect the one who came in there with the TP. But instead, he's just dying. I don't know, 4FC strategy, the second draft not working out as well. You have the outro. <laughs> yep, and we have the slot who cannot pounce with a Beyond Godlike streak by the end of the game. And it felt like this game just came down to simple outdraft. Um, I feel like 4FC, they really did do themselves in, in this game. Um, it's very unfortunate because I believe they're good players and the game could have been very different had they had a much more conventional stellar draft, I suppose. Yep, absolutely. So it's too bad 4FC is losing both games, but yeah, Osliki in a good shape, I have to say, for Division 2 game, uh, Division Two team, they have uh, like a very convincing uh, performance. Also Inquisitor, like as I said, he was like the no pound Slark, but this game everything was absolutely fine. I guess the other game, or the other games I casted with him being on the Slark, that was with uh, quite some delay on his side. But the fact is, they get a 2 zero here against 4FC. And I want to thank all of the people just for tuning in. Has been fun with you. 200 viewers here at its peak. But as I said, guys, um, this is just my private channel. Like, of course, we are both casters here for Hefla TV. My name is Hefla Mok, and with me was Mito. Like, you don't need to follow this channel. If you like what we do, then, of course, uh, go to Hefla TV 1 and 2. We they are, by the way, also streaming at the moment. You're going to have Power Rangers versus Hee Hee at the moment on Hefla TV 1. And on Hefla TV 2, you have uh, some other Division 2 games like uh, Polish team versus a British team, actually, also casted by a British caster as well as Coucher there. So there's a lot of action coming on here on Hefla TV. Just follow us on the, on the team page, as well as, of course, Facebook and Twitter and on YouTube. If you missed the games or if you want to share with your friends whatever happened here, the votes will be up approximately an hour after each cast so just go there uh, on YouTube and check it out and that being said I'm done for today